Lister. What dialect Spanish would you speak, and how many different dialects did you know well enough to speak them? I spoke Puerto Rican. Then when I was uh, uh, Puerto Rican, what they call Tonito, uh, Tonito Puerto Rican, uh, Tonito Boricua, I spoke with a Puerto Rican uh, accent because I grew up with all Puerto Ricans. My first girlfriend was Puerto Rican, Lydia Diaz. Uh, I just about lived with her, and uh, you, I just grew up. And I love that accent. I love the. I actually love the Puerto Rican culture. I, I still dance salsa with my wife. <laughs> uh, interesting. And uh, so, so no, wait, wait. Now, you, I want to talk about movies. Remember the, the Al Pacino movie where he plays the guy who's just out of jail, and he comes back and he wants to stay out. I forget the name of that movie. And he goes back to the mean streets of the Bronx. Carlito's Way. Thanks, Jim. Do you remember that movie at all, Michael? Excellent movie, yeah. What, was that based on any real people, in your estimation? You know, he, he's such a great actor that you know you look at him and you say he must have known all of these people that he that he plays because he he channels people, and I think the really great actors really experience the people they're portraying. They really all right. So now that brings us back to Sean Penn. I despise his politics, but I think he's a fabulous actor. He wants to play El Chapo, doesn't he? Uh, I don't know, but I'll tell you what. He's, I can understand him getting so into it that he wanted to get next to, you know, Robert De Niro, for example, uh, optioned The Big White Lie for a while. He never made it, but we went up to his office, and we were taught, Laura and I, we were talking to him. We spent about two hours there. His people were tapping their watches, and he was just studying me. Just, just, I could felt like I was being taken apart with, uh, you know, De Niro just studying me from head to. Another, so he was looking, he was studying you the way the drug cartels would study you when you were undercover, right? Yeah, the difference was the, the the drug dealers they were looking for any sign that I was the one thing they were afraid of, an undercover or an informant, any sign, and that's what I call acting with your audience inches from your face. And you don't get applause. Develop the ability, or had it, it was inborn, where I didn't show fear. Yeah, no, I know it very well. Uh, I, <laughs> I, I think I learned it in the, in the same streets as you did. You don't show fear, because you understand if you grow up in the Well, animals can smell fear, too, and that's a tough one to hide, by the way. Exactly right. And they, they, uh, you, you can't hide it. You, and you could smell it, and I could see it. I see. Oh, I can smell it on lawyers. I once walked into an arbitration hearing, and I won't say when. And I swear to God, the lawyers for the opposition, their suits stank, and my, I hated them for what they were trying to crucify me. I hated these lawyers after a while for the lies they were telling about me. My lawyer warned me. He said, remember, they're going to try to unnerve you with the questions. You've got to maintain your cool. I said, okay, I will. I come in, they ask me one question. I turn to the lawyers in front of the arbitrators, and I said to them, you know what? I detest men like you. Your suits stink so badly that I think that you're going to give people cancer just being in. I went on and on. So my lawyer ushered me, me out of the room, and he said, I told you not to do that, Michael. You've got to control your emotions. I said, okay, I'm sorry. I'll go back. I, he said, please go back and apologize to the arbitrators that you didn't mean to attack the opposition's lawyers. I said, okay, I go, and I did the same thing again. So you could see, you know, sometimes it's very hard to control your emotions, Michael, when you see such people that are such detect detestable human beings. You are a high wire, high tension guy. There's no, you know, I do your show. I th I've done a lot of shows. When I do your show. I come away at the end feeling like I had a ten round fight. <laughs> People ask how I'm still living and why I'm not fat. The answer is stress works for me. I mean, it does. I, you know, I actually know you a lot of years, and I can remember uh, almost by the minute the first time I walked into your studio in San Francisco. And you were moving and what? Ah, you, you just, you're just you an amazing guy. There's only one Mike Savage. That's the only thing I can tell you, audience. There, yeah, are, there are no other. Compli that's a compliment coming from my hero. That's all I can say. I wish I knew you when I was a kid. Boy, would I have gotten even with people I didn't like. So, Michael, what's going to happen with Sean Penn? That's what I want to know. We don't know, right? It's impossible to tell. I mean, but what you just said is you the best advice is avoid lawyers at all costs. He took a giant step into the land of lawyers. So let's take a call quickly. Santos yes. has been holding on KSFO.
Santos, please make your point. Welcome to the Savage Nation. Thank you. Uh, my point is this. Uh, there are historical precedents where we do leverage uh, Hollywood and the entertainment industry to uh, facilitate operations. I, I think there's a historic, there's an alleged historical precedent where uh, El, uh, Elvis was honored at the White House by Nixon for facilitating the DEA at the time. I don't know, Mike. If, what do you, what do you think of that? Elvis you know, was working for the, was working for Nixon. Is this the same situation, Mike? Funny about that was I was a DEA agent when that came, and and uh, President Nixon gave him a DEA badge. Uh, DEA had just been created, and Elvis immediately went out and uh, arrested somebody. <laughs> they would, they so would, I mean, maybe Sean Penn will get a DEA badge for this act. Uh, well, he went out and used his badge. He thought it's real that he could go. <laughs> Enforce the so, law. Uh, Santos, what you're saying is, is a little different, right? You're saying the government has used people in, in Hollywood before, right? Uh, well, most recently, uh, uh, during the uh, during the war, and I'm, I'm a, a wounded combat vet receiving my care here, um, is uh, uh, during the war, uh, the special ops community uh, with the psychological operations guys, embedded guys with Fox News to learn how radio and television broadcast worked, and uh, they were spanked, and uh, I think it was the ACLU used the Munt Act to uh, stymie that. Well, let me send you a gift from the Savage Nation, Santos, a copy of Government Zero for your service to this country. Michael, are we winning the war on drugs, or is it over? Oh, my, Mike, this, this is not a war that anybody fought. We, you know, I was, I was hired. I wrote a book, Fight Back, How to Win, How to Win the Drug War in Your Own Neighborhood. And it was called by the Swedish Carnegie Institute, the only book that ever made sense to come out of the U.S. on the drug war. And I was hired as the drug czar of Barnstable County, Massachusetts, to bring that uh, that book into life, to make it real. I, I can, well, I, well, Michael, I don't mean to cut you off. You know that every word that you utter is important to me, but you know the exigencies of the radio world. We're going to come back. We're going to take one last call about Hillary Clinton and what you think of the case against her on the Savage Nation. I'm going to finish up with uh, the great friend of mine, Michael Levine. Michael, welcome back to the program. People want to know your opinion of this. Hillary Clinton, can they indict her based on these uh, tapes? Here's the thing. I, again, I testify in court all the time. I'm going to use a word, elements of probable cause. That means reason to believe that a crime was committed. Now, if you're a normal walking around person and you acquire the elements of probable cause for the crimes that the newspapers uh, say that Hillary is committing, because, again, I, gotta, I have to guard my reputation, the big question is, why hasn't it been put before a grand jury of American citizens? I don't understand that. And that's what... You, and now, we're talking about her emails, whether they were classified or not, right? That's what we're talking about. So, uh, she says she didn't knowingly transmit any classified information. And yet there's evidence she told underlings to cover it up. Your question, the, your statement is, why hasn't it been brought to a grand jury? The answer is because Obama is president. I, I, again, they hope, you know, one day if we're going to have a government that's really for the people, by the people, Congress, if, if it ever decides to develop cojones and do what, uh, what Congress is supposed to be doing, Congress will hold hearings to try and determine where the buck stopped. How, how, how come you have these allegations and the American people, you know, a, a good portion of the population uh, is concerned. I, I put people in jail throughout my career for, for making false statements, false official statements. I've locked mm. For less than what Hillary did. I get it. I know how far you can go. You're not a talk show host. I am. Michael Levine, The Big White Lie. Which one of your books is moving up the list now? Which one? Deep Cover. But I, the Deep Cover. Well, let me know the next time you're on the West Coast and we'll uncover some good food in North Beach. It won't be Puerto Rican, but it'll be Sicilian. And you could talk to my friend Giovanni in Pinocchio. This is the Savage Nation, back with Dan Horowitz. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-728-SAVAGE. It is 
Disco Tuesday. Suddenly it's 1981 on the Savage Nation. Yeah, well, it's not 1981 anymore. We're moving on in the Savage Nation. Now it gets worse with Sean Penn. Uh, Rolling Stones rock star Sean Penn blames America, not El Chapo, for the drug violence. As you'd expect from a Hollywood idiot, wouldn't you? Everything is backwards. Everything is backwards. Dan Horowitz is the only lawyer I trust in America because he's my lawyer. He's the only good one in the country. Dan, welcome to the Savage Nation. Dan, 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 Dan. Can't hear him, guys. Make make a little effort to connect him because Horowitz back to life. It seems that he died in the ethers of the airwaves. You are here. Good. You are here. All right, you're here. So, Dan, Dan why are you here? Why is Dan Horowitz on my show right now? I don't know. You're fading. Something's wrong with the connection. All right, let's disconnect and start again. Rolling Stones rock star Sean Penn blames America, not El Chapo, for drug violence. An interesting article. And there it is again. Not one newspaper in this country uh, projected any kind of disdain towards Sean Penn for that article. Not one of them. And not only that, but the world's most notorious fugitive, uh, El Chapo was given veto power over the article written by the great journalist Sean Penn. I suppose he'll be given a uh, position in the society of professional uh, journalists. There's ethics questions, there are legal questions, but there's a more striking question, which is why would you glorify a drug dealer? That's the question that you have to ask. But when you look at the founder of Rolling Stone, Jan Wenner, the uh, question is answered for you. Because these people, in my opinion, answer the question just by being. They have no morality to begin with, in my estimation. They have no ethics, in my estimation, to begin with. Nor does Sean Penn, in my opinion. And now we'll go back to the guest again on the Savage Nation. We'll try for a second shot. Dan Horowitz, welcome back to the Savage Nation. Michael, I, I've got you. I'm here. Okay, so why are you on the show? Why did I invite you on? What's the topic? Well, you've got a great victory. People should know that the only reason they're hearing you is that five years ago, you got fed up with Talk Radio Network and sued them to get out of your contract because they were mismanaging the radio show. And you got out of it years later, signed with Cumulus, with tremendous ratings, tremendous distribution, but it took until yesterday for the victory to finally be upheld by the Supreme Court, which refused to hear their appeal. And you now finally, by the way, 90 days from today, I forgot to tell you when I talked to you earlier, 90 days from today, you can finally go to TRN and get your archives, take them out of TRN's greedy hands, and maybe make them available to your listeners. Yeah, well, right. I've been wanting my, my, my radio tapes going back to the year 2000 since this started. What if they're not there? What if they're gone? Where would they, Dan? What do we do then if they just disappeared my archives? In other words, if they took something that's so valuable that they held on to it all these years and tried to take, tried to steal from you, I'll say that outright. Um, if they destroy them, it's, it's priceless. I mean, we listened. I, I have videotapes of the Johnny Carson shows that I watched when I was young, and it'll be lost to, to everybody. So they better not have destroyed them. And I'll tell you something. Anybody who worked for TRN or who's there right now, preserve them. Preserve them. Make a copy of them. Get them to us, and we will compensate you. How's that? Do you agree? Mm -hmm. I noticed that something else happened that evening after the Supreme Court case, Dan, and I don't know if it's related to it. You want to tell the audience about that interesting news article? Yeah, how about the news article? I've got the press release from the Oregon State Police because I didn't want to go on air just on a news article. It appears that just hours after Mark Masters lost in the Supreme Court of the United States, it was a silent alarm and a 911 hang up from his residence. The police responded, determined it was a domestic disturbance, and Mark Masters was taken away, charged with assault, menacing, and harassment. But who did he do 